Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Tuesday, September 6th, 2022, and today we are going to be talking about this brand new poll from the Wall Street Journal that shows that independent voters are now tilting towards the Democratic Party in the upcoming midterm elections. Now, this is a big change from their March poll that showed that independent voters were heavily in favor of the Republican Party. That same poll also showed President Biden down by a larger number than what he is down by today on average and in the Wall Street Journal poll. It is quite fascinating to see the change in trajectory in favor of the Democratic Party over the past couple of months, ones that have been outlined explicitly in polls such as this that use a very similar sampling and grouping of people from one that was month, taken months prior that give us a tracker or sort of an understanding of how the race has developed over time. Independent voters are paramount to any political party success. In 2020, based off of exit polling data from CNN, the Democratic Party won independent voters 51 to 40, 54 to 41. The Democrat and Republican vote share was roughly similar. Taking a look at the results in 2018, you also found a very similar answer. Amongst Democrats and Republicans, their party vote share was pretty much the same in terms of respective political party. But in terms of independents, Democrats won them 49 to 37, according to the Wall Street Journal. Now the Democratic Party leads independent voters for the first time in a long time, ones that are quite interesting and a very good result for the Democratic Party, at least in comparison to previously. Looking at the generic ballot as well, you will find that in general, the Republican Party was ahead. Their numbers from November 2021 showed the GOP at 44, the Democrats at just 41. That lead expanded for the Republican Party in March of 2022, with Republicans at 46 to the Democratic Party's 41, a five-point difference. And for the first time in the history of their midterm tracking poll, the Democrats have now overcome the Republican Party in a very similar story to what we have seen now on the national generic ballot, in which Democrats officially mark around one month of leading nationally despite being down for nine consecutive months on the 538 forecast, sorry, on the 538 generic ballot uh, and the 538 uh, overall average and the real clear politics one as well. Seeing how independent voters have led the Democratic Party to victory in both 2018 and 2020, we are likely going to need to see a similar result in terms of this advantage over the GOP if Democrats are to replicate a 2020 or 2018 type of victory. But that honestly doesn't seem to be the priority for the Democratic Party. Their main priority is retaining both chambers, and it looks a lot easier for them in the U.S. Senate than it does in the House elections. Don't get me wrong. This Wall Street Journal poll does not negate the fact that the Democratic Party is not doing too well nationally, at least comparable to where they were in 2018 and 2020. In terms of President Biden's disapproval rating, you have about a 10 point difference here, which is certainly a significant improvement off of what was down 20 points just three weeks ago, four weeks ago. But looking at the results now, the Democratic Party certainly has narrowed it up. But at the end of the day, narrowing it up only goes so far because the uh, results here still show that President Biden is still disapproved of by the majority of the nation. Looking at the generic ballot in comparison to where we were two years ago, you'll find that on September 5th, 2020, that the Democratic Party was leading nationally by a margin of seven points. In 2018, the Democratic Party was leading nationally on September 5th, 2018 by a margin of 8.4% nationwide. So to see that narrow down by seven points to the right in favor of the Republican Party, Democrats only leading by one point, we aren't going to see a 2020 or 2018 type of year. At best for the Democratic Party, they hold on to the Senate and narrowly hold on to the House in the best case scenario. We are not returning to a blue wave year. But that isn't to say that these results don't show something different and beneficial for the Democratic Party, contrary to what it showed before. If we were to go off the Wall Street Journal poll in March of 2021, and that was the overall average for Republicans in November on Election Day, it would be a done deal that the Republican Party was winning both chambers and locking down many other governor and state legislative races, because that would have been a significant bump for the GOP, contrary to their popular vote losses in 2016, 2018, 2020. In fact, on the presidential level, the Republican Party has only won the popular vote one time in the 21st century, in the 2004 election. They lost it in 2000, 2008, 2012, 2016, 2020. Even though Republicans have won three elections here, they have not won the national popular vote. So for the Republicans to do that in this midterm, at least by the expectation in November 2021, by the expectation in March of 2022, it would have been phenomenal for the Republican Party. But that, quite frankly, is not what happened. In fact, now the Democrats are pulling ahead. Specifically amongst independent voters, we've been talking about them for uh, a very uh, significant portion of this video, largely because that's what this video is about, how independent voters feel about Democrats and Republicans. And it says amongst political independents, 
typically the key to victory in close elections. Absolutely true. More voters now favor a Democratic candidate for Congress than a Republican. 38% to 35. A lot of undecided voters here, but still a lead for the Democratic Party. And still a super significant shift from the March numbers that showed Republicans led amongst independents by 12 percentage points. This is a 15-point swing from March 2022 to now 2022. A difference that has only really been the time frame of a Roe v. Wade leak, then eventual decision in June, between March and then, that is the only major difference. Because inflation is still a major issue, President Biden is still disapproved of, and looking at the March numbers at that point in time, President Biden was disapproved of by a very similar amount. You are talking about nearly identical presidential uh, environments for against the Democratic Party, a different generic ballot by about three points, but the swing here, so, so substantial. And the Wall Street Journal was a poll that showed such good results for the GOP back in March, such good results for them back in November. And now the Democrats are pulling ahead. And if they overestimated Republican support back in March, you see the average here had Republicans up by about two points. They showed the GOP up by about five. In the November time frame, they had the Republicans up by about three. Democrats were only losing here by less than a point for a pretty consistent period of time to see the difference here, seeing an outperformance for the GOP. I am questioning whether or not that A has changed or B means that Democrats actually might be leading by an even larger amount amongst this Wall Street Journal poll. Because overall, what they have is the Democratic Party up by a very narrow amount, three points. But you are talking from March to now, an eight-point swing nationwide, and amongst political independents, a 15-point swing. If the GOP cannot win independent voters on Election Day, they can still win the House of Representatives. But the Senate is a lot trickier. Right now, the Democratic Party holds a 68% chance at retaining control of the U.S. Senate. And the reason why they're doing that is because not only are they winning independence on the national level, as the Wall Street Journal poll might suggest, and practically every other poll that has been released, but also because they are winning political independence in states where it matters the most. Swing states, if you give them that. And you have the states such as New Hampshire, in which polling data and just general data from previous elections and candidate quality, whatever it might be, independent voters don't exactly seem too inclined to vote for the GOP in the state of New Hampshire. But it isn't just New Hampshire. It's also the state of Pennsylvania, a state with a Republican incumbent in which the Democrat has a 79% chance at victory. This should be a case study. Someone should write a thesis or a statement or a paper on the state of Pennsylvania because the trajectory change in favor of the Democratic Party in this state has been substantial, phenomenal for the National Democrats, ones that they honestly should have never expected but should be so happy that it happened. Because when this forecast initially was doing projections, Republicans led in the state of Pennsylvania by sometimes a margin of 66% to 34% in favor of the Republican Party. 65% was an average for about two weeks straight. And now that number is down to just 21. And the expected margin of victory, what was a GOP victory by three points, has turned into a Democratic victory of six points. A nine-point swing very similar to what we now see on the Wall Street Journal. This independent shift isn't just on the national level. You are seeing a very similar by number swing in terms of shift, a swing in terms of uh, support for either political party on the more individual level as well. You can also see this displayed in the state of Arizona, for instance, where the initial forecast had the Democrats ahead, but not nearly to the extent that they have them ahead right now. The forecast then showed the Democrats winning by, in some cases, about two points, in some cases, three points. Today, that's expected to be around six. A three-point shift, a four-point shift, depending on what you look at, good for the Democratic Party. Altogether, a very favorable shift. You take a look at the state of Wisconsin, for instance, where the Democrat has a 48% chance of victory. They are the underdogs in this circumstance. But it was definitely not always like that. When the forecast launched, the Republicans had a 77% chance of victory. And as time went on, it started to decrease. The popular vote expectation, Democrats were supposed to lose this race by an epic margin. You are going to see the GOP win here by nearly seven points statewide. In fact, this margin here would be around seven points if you rounded upwards. But today... The Democrats and Republicans are within less than a point. You are talking about a seven-point shift in favor of the Democratic Party. This national change, this change in independent sentiment, this change in national sentiment has translated to nearly a universal shift in support 
in favor of the Democratic Party in some of these more close and competitive races across the nation. There are some exceptions, though. For instance, the state of Georgia really hasn't changed from the numbers based off of the uh, early expectations. Yes, the Republican Party was ahead, but Democrats and Republicans are still very much neck and neck. And it's not a change like Pennsylvania. It's not a change like the state of Arizona. It's definitely an improvement for Democrats, but not to the extent that I would say it should be. It was a two-point margin of victory for the GOP, now a one-point margin of victory for the Democrats. Sure, about a three-point shift is recognizable. Yes, I would actually say that that is substantial because obviously it changed the outcome and the eventual winner, but that race is still pretty competitive for uh, either political party. States such as Ohio and North Carolina really didn't change that much. The only thing is that Ohio got more competitive. What was a 90% chance of victory translated down now to a 73%. Nothing super substantial, but it was meant to be about a 10-point victory, which is now about a 5-point victory, about a 5-point shift. But at the end of the day, the Democrats simply aren't winning Ohio, practically regardless of what happens on the national level. So seeing this translate, this Wall Street Journal polls, uh, you know, indication or analysis that independent voters are now tilting towards the Democrats has been very clearly established, not only in polling data, but also in expert forecasts, but also in betting markets, but also in expert ratings. The numbers for the GOP back in March were significantly better than the numbers are today for their party. And you can find that to be a result, not a change in Democrats and Republicans wanting to vote for different political parties, but rather because of independent voters. And as, if I've, as I have showed you, Independent voters are the reason why Democrats win. They're the reason why Republicans win as well. Neither political party can win without them. And that's just the facts of it all. In 2020, the Democrats relied on them to propel Biden to victory. In 2018, the Democratic Party relied on them to propel national and local Democrats to victory. And it worked effectively. Independent voters are the bedrock of our democracy. They are the bedrock of any winning campaign. And without them, you simply cannot win. That's why the expectations for the Democratic Party in March of 2022 were so bad because of the fact that they could not win independent voters. Not only could they not win them, but that Republicans were winning them by 12 points overall. You are talking about a complete and total flip from where we were back in 2018. And if Republicans were to have that, the House would have been a foregone conclusion and locked down from the very beginning, which for many months, a year and a half, we thought would be true. The Senate would be locked down for about you know, a few months. We started dabbling in initially when Biden was high and uh, riding high on his approval. He had uh, a honeymoon phase that helped the Democratic Party in some of these races. But it soon became evident between the months of November onward that the GOP would win control of the House. That doesn't seem to be the case at this point or win the control of the Senate. That does not seem to be the case. The Republican, uh, Republican Party will have a victory there. I think that just looking at our change in independent voter status tells us that a lot has really benefited the Democratic Party recently. And it comes down to an issue of abortion, an issue of inflation, things that matter to voters, but don't seem to be swaying them too heavily in favor of the GOP. I would encourage you to read more into this article. There's a lot more questions that we really just haven't tapped into, such as questions about the right and wrong direction for uh, the country. You also find that minority voters have shifted now more in favor of the Democratic Party, contrary to before. You can find quotes from Tony Fabrizio, which is from Fabrizio Lee and Associates, a Republican pollster that typically does internal races. These are things that were uh, very clearly established in his quote. Republicans were cruising and Democrats were having a hard time, but then said that things changed. It's almost like the abortion issue came along and was kind of like a defibrillator to Democrats, which is entirely true. 60% of the voters here say abortion should be legal in all or most cases, up from five percentage points in March. I mean, what you're finding is that the United States Supreme Court has made them more likely to vote and more likely to vote for one political party. And you can see that very clearly described on the generic ballot, on the President Biden approval rating, on the national forecast. Everything is telling us that the Democratic Party is able to use this effectively and that this is a winning strategy and a winning message. The Democrats align with the overwhelming majority of the nation. You saw the polls. 60 percent of respondents say abortion should be legal in all or most cases. The pro-life agenda, the pro-life initiative by the Republican Party is not general sentiment. It's not what the majority of the nation wants, and it's not what the majority of this nation self-describes them as. The majority of this country is pro-life, sorry, pro-choice. Majority of them want to see abortion legalized across the country and want to see the Dobbs decision overturned. But obviously, that's something that isn't going to happen for decades to come. And Democrats know that helps them. And it also means that there is so much more at stake for this election, contrary to anyone before it. 
So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2022 election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later today.